Hello, my name is Tony Surridge and I've been teaching professional accountancy students for more years than I care to let on. For your interest, I am recording in the town of Folkestone, England, where I live. When looking at the Atlas, Folkestone is perhaps the closest part of England to France. We are about 80 miles, 80, from London. So you can imagine my journey when I go in and out of London to teach. I want to give you some tips on how to answer the ACCA Paper P3 Business Analysis Section A question. I call these questions the big picture scenarios. I guess that you call them something less flattering. Examiners use case studies to test your ability to apply the knowledge you would have acquired during your business studies to solve practical problems. And this, of course, is one of the biggest difficulties that many students face. They know the knowledge, understand the syllabus, have read through many past exam questions and answers, but are still not confident that they will be able to answer questions in the exam. The word how is the most asked question of me and I have taught ACCA students in different countries throughout the world. I hope that you and I can address the word how now. The examiner wants to see that you have developed skills on problem solving and are able to bring together and weld textbook theory, established analytical techniques and of course analytical models and most importantly your common business sense in a way that assimilates data and provides solutions for scenarios which if not based on real situations certainly closely simulate reality. Incidentally we are not born with common sense we are born with instincts. Common sense is acquired from knowledge which means study. To obtain exam success, you will need to demonstrate that you can read and understand big picture scenarios and are able to understand and establish meaningful cause, effect and remedy relationships. You are carrying out such analyses in an informal way every day of your life anyway. The examiner looks to see that you are aware of the range of problems that you can identify and explain the implications and effects that these bring to bear on the situation and, all, and are also able to evaluate and justify either your own or presented solutions. The examiner will be looking for a mature approach to problem solving that produces sensible, coherent structured and pertinent answers. Easily said, I can almost hear you thinking. Hands-on discussion is required. You may think that's an oxymoron. How can you discuss with your hands? Uh, but never mind. In essence, the examiner will need to be assured that you are able to meaningfully contribute to management decision-making in the real business world. Examination case study questions are designed to produce hands-on discussion. Incidentally, don't forget that you're not simply learning for an exam. What about the one hour promotion or appointment interview? Big picture scenarios, which are read in only 15 minutes, are still able to describe a complex situation for the student who is adept at reading between the lines. The analogy is one of painting a picture. The examiner will present an outline drawing this is the scenario which you, by using your knowledge, creativity and opinion, will bring to life by adding different and appropriate colours. Big picture scenarios present problems that would, in truth, exercise the minds of experienced managers over a period of several weeks at least, if not months. In the examination, you have precious little time, 90 minutes to be precise, in which to read, think about and then present a required length of answer. Furthermore, you see the case study cold, with no previous knowledge of the organisation involved, and probably with only a scant knowledge of the industrial market. 
Important corporate and business backdrop information, such as financial data, product details, company history, ownership and management structure, which is readily available for real-life managers with their day-to-day -day experiences, internal files, documents and working papers, is only briefly presented in exam questions or else will need to be assumed. You might think this is unfair tough. We have to live with it. You need to understand the big picture from a standing start, so you need to develop the difficult skills involved in quickly reading and understanding the big picture from a standing start. These are skills which are best developed by practice. When you pick up a case study scenario, be logical and start at the end first. Seriously though, it is sensible to read the question's punchlines first, namely the required question set, that is the ABC sections of the case study. This will give you an early feel or buzz about the overall aim and direction of the scenario and let you know what you are going to write about. Keep these in mind while you are absorbing the detail of the scenario and thus maximise your most important reading time. Also, not surprisingly, your brain will subconsciously begin to retrieve required knowledge in much the same way as modern software migrates most recently and required data to the front of a file or folder. Take care to read through the scenario which the examiner has presented slowly and thoroughly. Think about each sentence. Make sure you understand each word and each term used. Also ensure that you have identified the situation, the people, the actions and issues involved in the case. Do not merely skim read, otherwise you will waste important examination time and may overlook important facts. We will work through a case study shortly. Remember, there are no rules for developing strategy and associated plans. What has happened over the past few decades is that management consultants, who are often academics working in universities, have used their practical experiences acquired by looking into client problems to develop suggested frameworks that could help other organisations faced with similar situations. The fact that they made a lot of money at the same time is another issue. However, what is important is that the examiner has included a number of such frameworks in the paper P3 syllabus and expects you to use them. So always expect the examiner to set a question that requires a strategic position to be analysed by using an academic framework or frameworks. For example, PESTEL, the Cultural Web, Porter's Five Forces, Diamond, SWOT and so on. Know all the frameworks and know how to use them. One solution to the how problem is to read the case study once only and to use different highlighter pens to colour code sentences on the question paper as you read. Say in the case of Peston Analysis, you may choose the following colours. Political factors blue, economic factors orange, social factors green, technological factors red, ecological factors yellow, legal factors grey by using a pencil. Use the colour coding system during your 15 minutes reading time and then you can assemble your answer quickly under the six subheadings by picking out the colours. It is a simple approach. As I explained, the best technique is to read the question set first. Then, while you are reading the full case study scenario, you know what is expected. These are lengthy case study scenarios and you should try to get maximum value from your first and perhaps only full reading. Incidentally, there is never one answer only to these questions. Remember the old hat example. Is it an advantage to be seven feet tall with size 20 feet? Well, it is if you're a basketball player. You could probably earn $50 million a year, but not if you're a jockey. In other words, it is the situation that counts, and this requires interpretation. Of course, people interpret differently, and the examiner is aware of this, and so looks for your explanation, argument, and sense of discussion. You will often see that professional marks are awarded, as in the case of the National Museum question we're going to look at. 
So how do you earn such marks? Well, simply remember what a professional is and what services he or she provides. Remember, professional marks are earned by professional answer presentation, professional judgment, in my opinion, professional assessment. In my view, the implications are professional advice. I recommend that. Professional synthesis of facts. Taking X with Y, we must conclude. Always build an overtone of professionalism within your answer. Use expressions such as, in my judgment, I have the opinion that, my reason conclusion is, the facts presented indicate, and so on. So back to the National Museum case study question. In the case of the National Museum, the question set is replicated below. Pause the video, then carefully read through the questions, and when you have done this and are ready, restart the video. Please pause now. We only intend to work through section A here. However, if we get sufficient requests through our social sites, we will be pleased to provide another freebie dealing with sections B and C. Let us know if this would be of use to you. Part A requires a PESTEL analysis. PESTEL helps management to understand the organization's macro environment. As such, the PESTEL variables are usually not strategic drivers. For example, organizations do not normally develop a political strategy, economic strategy, or social strategy, and so on. However, they often need to plan competitive strategies, marketing strategies and product market strategies, which are, of course, each influenced by their own micro or focused environmental dynamics. For example, Michael Porter's Five Forces model may indicate the dynamics that affect the need for and development of a competitive response. However, PESTEL analysis provides essential information that might suggest that one of the other strategies is required. For example, in the case of the National Museum, which we are about to read, the fact that the government intends to reduce its grants, which is a political issue, means that the museum may need to develop a marketing strategy to deal with the resultant shortfall in its income. In the exam, you would now need to read the scenario. I will do it with you and at the same time show you how the colour coding system works. Remember, there is not a single answer and so you may disagree with my choices. All the best if you do. However, your explanation as to your own choice would be required to gain marks. We will now read through the case study. Introduction. The National Museum was established in 1857 to house collections of art textiles and metalware for the nation. It remains in its original building, which is itself of architectural importance. Unfortunately, the passage of time has meant that the condition of the building has deteriorated and so it requires continual repair and maintenance. Alterations have also been made to ensure that the building complies with the disability access and health and safety laws of the country. My comments. I think that you will agree that this is either an ecological problem, such as energy in inefficiency or lack of energy conservation, or a legal problem, which of course relates to health and safety legislation. I consider this to be more of an ecological problem that needs to be addressed, so I have coloured this part yellow. Back to the case study. However, these alterations have been criticised as being unsympathetic and out of character with the rest of the building. The building is in a previously affluent area of the capital city. However, what were once large middle-class family houses have now become multi-occupied apartments, and the social-economic structure of the area has radically changed. 
The area has also, also suffers from an increasing crime rate. A visitor to the museum was recently assaulted whilst waiting for a bus to take her home. The assault was reported in both local and, news and national newspapers. My comment. The decay of the neighbourhood and the increasing crime rate is a social problem that seriously confronts the museum. I colour it green. Back to the case study. Thirty years ago, the government identified the museums that held significant heritage collections. These are collections that are deemed to be very significant to the country. Three heritage collections were identified at the National Museum, a figure that has risen to seven in the intervening years as the museum has acquired new items. My comment. There is no suggestion in this last paragraph that the museum has problems. It would not form part of Pestel analysis. Back to the case study. Funding and structure. The National Museum is currently 90% funded by direct grants from government. My comment. The museum is heavily funded by government, which has political ramifications. I colour this blue. Back to the case study. The rest of its income comes from a nominal emission charge and from private sponsorship of exhibitions. The direct fundings from the government is based on a number of factors, but the number of heritage collections held by the museum is a significant funding influence. The Board of Trustees of the National Museum divide the museum's income between departments roughly on the basis of the previous year's budget plus an inf inflation percentage. The division of money between departments is heavily influenced by the heritage collections. Departments with heritage collections tend to be allocated a larger budget. The budgets for 2013 and 2014 are shown in figure 1 on this screen. My comment, knowledge that the museum uses an incremental budgeting system is interesting and may be relevant in a, in a later part of the question set. It is not relevant for Pestel analysis. However, the fact that resources are divided in favour of the heritage collection is a political problem. I colour it blue. Back to the case study. My comment. The table does not tell us much with regard to Pestel analysis. It may be worrying that the museum does not have commerce expenditure budgeted, such as marketing, but this is not relevant to part A of the case study. The budget system could, of course, be the cause of conflict and would then present a political problem. Remember that politics is related to power, status and personalities and is not necessarily restricted to the powers and activities of a government as such. If you took this view, you would colour blue. Back to the case study. The head of each collection section is an important position and enjoys many privileges, including a large office, a special section head's dining room and a dedicated personal assistant. The heads of sections which have heritage collections also hold the title of professor from the National University. My comment. The fact that resources such as the head's dining room is an underutilised resource, under resource that could be used instead in a commercial way to generate income might be considered to be an economic problem faced by the museum, in which case we colour it orange. Back to the case study. The departmental structure of the National Museum, see figure 2 below, is largely built around the 12 main sections of the collection. These sections are grouped into three departments, each of which has a director. The board of directors is made up of the three directors of these departments, together with the director of administration and the director general. The museum is a charity run by a board of trustees. There are currently eight trustees, two of whom have been recently appointed by the government. The other six trustees are people well known and respected in academic fields relevant to the museum's collections.
my comments. The fact that the museum is directed by a board of trustees represents both legal and power problems. Both could be included in your answer discussion. Here I use the colour grey for legal. Back to the case study. My comment. Figure 2 does not present information that would be useful for pestal analysis. Back to the case study. Government change. One year ago, a new national government was elected. The newly appointed Minister for Culture implemented the government's election manifesto commitment to make museums more self-funding. The minister has declared that in five years' time, the museum must cover 60% of its own costs and only 40% will be directly funded by government. My comment. The policy of this new government definitely presents the museum with an economic problem that it will need to resolve. I colour this orange. Back to the case study. This change in funding will gradually be phased in over the next five years. The 40% government grant will be linked to the museum achieving specific specified targets for disability access, social inclusion and electronic commerce and access. The government is committed to increasing museum attendance by lower social economic classes and younger people so that they are more aware of their heritage. My comment. The stated policy of government is a political issue, although it does have both social and economic ramifications. I colour this blue. Back to the case study. Furthermore, it also wishes to give increasing access to museum exhibits to disabled people who cannot physically visit the museum site. The government has asked all museums to produce a strategy document showing how they intend to meet these financial, accessibility and technological objectives. The government's opposition has, since the election, also agreed that the reliance of museums on government funding should be reduced. My comment. We could say that this is a social issue that needs to be addressed. So we colour green. Back to the case study. Traditionally, the National Museum has provided administrative support for sections and departments grouped together beneath a director of administration. The role of the Director General has been a part-time post. However, the funding changes introduced by the government and the need to produce a strategy document have spurred the Board of Directors to appoint a full-time Director General from the private sector. The trustees felt that they needed private industry experience to develop and implement a strategy to achieve the government's objectives. The new Director General was previously the Chief Executive Officer of a major chain of supermarkets. My comment. Interpreting this paragraph, for example the fact that the Director General has been a part-time post, added to the general tenure of some of the previous statements might suggest that the, that the museum does not have a commercial culture. This would present a serious economic problem, so I colour this orange back to the case study. Director General's proposal. The new Director General has produced a strategic planning document showing how the National Museum intends to meet the government's objectives. Proposals in this document include 
Number one, allocating budgets from 2013 to sections based on visitor popularity. The most visited collections will receive the most money. The idea is to stimulate sections to come up with innovative ideas that will attract more visitors to the museum. Visitor numbers have been declining since 2009. See figure three on this screen. My comment. Declining visitor numbers would also be interpreted as a serious economic problem for the museum. Colour orange. The fact that visitors are proportionately of older age is worrying, particularly since the new government has stressed youth as part of its performance requirement. Colour green. Back to the case study. We return to proposals included in the Director General's strategic planning document. Number two, increasing entrance charges to increase income but to make entry free to pensioners, students, children and people receiving government payment uh, benefit payments. Number three, removing the head of section's dining room and turning this into a restaurant for visitors. An increase in income from catering is also proposed in the document. Number four, removing the head of section's personal assistance and introducing a support staff pool to reduce administrative costs. Number five, increasing the display of exhibits. Only 10% of the museum's collection is open to the public. The rest is held in storage. Number six, increasing commercial income from selling posters, postcards and other souvenirs. My comment. The stated proposals do not as such relate to ex post analysis, however they do overall reinforce the view that the culture of the museum is not commercially driven, which in its soon to be business environment is a serious economic fault. Colour orange. Knowledge that only 10% of the museum's collection is open to the public the rest is held in storage, points that the museum is not taking advantage of the impact that information technology could make on its service quality. I highlight this problem as red. Back to the case study. The Director General has also suggested a major restructuring of the organisation as shown in figure 4 on this screen. My comment Figure 4 does not provide information useful for a pestle analysis. Back to the case study. Reaction to the proposals. Employees have reacted furiously to the Director General's suggestions. The idea of linking budgets to visitor numbers has been greeted with dismay by the Director of Art and Architecture. Quote, this is a dreadful idea and confuses popularity with historical significance. As previous governments have realised, what is important is the value of the collection. Heritage collections recognise this significance by putting the national nation's interests before those of an undiscerning public. As far as I am concerned, if they want to see fashion, they can look in the high street shops. Unlike fashion, great art and architecture remains. End of quote. The Director of Art and Architecture and the two professors who hold the Head of Architecture and Head of Art posts have also lobbied individual members of the Board of Trustees with their concerns about the Director General's proposals. My comment. Such comments clearly illustrate that an agency problem exists. Disparaging remarks about other stakeholders suggests a corporate government issue which could be looked upon as representing a political issue. Colour blue. Back to the case study. The Director of Industrial Arts and the Director of Media and Contemporary Arts have contacted powerful figures in both television and the press and as a result a number of articles and letters critical of the Director General's proposals have appeared. A recent television programme called Strife at the National Museum also figured interviews with various heads of collections criticising the proposed changes. They were particularly critical of the lack of consultation. Quote, These proposals have been produced with no input from museum staff. They have been handed down from on high by an ex-grocer. End of quote, said one anonymous contributor. 
my comment. Lack of senior management loyalty and teamwork also suggests that there is a political problem. Again, I colour this blue. Back to the case study. Eventually, the criticism of staff and their lack of cooperation prompted the Director General to ask the Board of Trustees to publicly back him. However, only the two trustees appointed by the government were per prepared to do so. Consequently, the Director General resigned. This has prompted an angry response from the government, which has now threatened to cut the museum's funding dramatically next year and to change the composition of the Board of Directors so that the majority of trustees are appointed directly by the government. The Minister of Culture has asked the museum to develop and recommend a new strategy within one month. My comment. The museum is currently without the leadership of a strong director general and this represents a serious political problem. I colour this blue. We have now reached the end of the scenario. What you now need to do is to thread all the different colour-coded points together under their respective subheadings and then to arrive at your overall conclusions. This will include views you have formed from a general or overview perspective. Scoring points. The strategic planning procedure starts with knowing the objectives. The same applies to you. Your objective is simply to score as many marks as you can and to ensure that you are successful in the examination. A case study question provides you with fertile ground for scoring points. The ways you can score high in a set case study varies according to the nature and direction of the questions posed by the examiner. For this reason, you will need to pick and mix the hints offered below. Bring into your answer as much as you can of the scenario presented. Make sure that you keep referring to the organisation concerned. Try to use all the financial quantitative data provided somewhere in your answer. List all the pertinent issues, causes, issues, influences and problems. Don't be content with discussing a single issue. Demonstrate by discussion that you have read and understand the facts presented in the case study and find them useful. Show by the way you present your answer that you are aware of the range of possible courses of action and the consequences of each. State any assumptions you have made. Recommend policy and actions if appropriate. Taking into account the analysis we conducted, we are now able to present 26 points of issue under six subheadings. 26 relevant points for a 20 mark question is a strong answer. Of course, in the exam, you would need to write the points in a discursive format. We present the same answer as an overview to enable you to more easily assimilate what is stated. Let's go through our overview answer. Ask yourself what is being examined here. The question requires you to carry out an analysis of the museum's macro environment. The question specifically requires pestal analysis and extra marks are available for the depth of your argument. First, an introduction. A brief introduction to Pestal analysis explaining that it is an analysis of the museum's macro environment would be useful. Also, the Pestal influences are interlinked and so, for example, political developments and environmental requirements are often implemented through enacting legislation. Political factors. Monitoring the political environment is essential, basically because the government owns the museum. The museum is reliant on government funding. Currently, 90% of all funds are obtained from the government. The government intends to gradually reduce funding. A reduction in grant down to 40% in only five years shows by how much the museum is affected by the recently elected government's decision to gradually reduce that funding. Opposition to change has led to political ramifications. Their opposition to change, which 
accumulated in the Director General's resignation has led to further political ramifications. The government is now threatening heavier funding cuts and further political trustee appointments. The political appointment of at least two trustees is also important. It was also significant that it was these two trustees appointed by the government who supported the Director General and his proposed changes. The government's grant will be linked to performance. The continued funding of the government will now largely depend on performance measures such as accessibility, which have been determined by a political agenda. The museum must strive to meet these objectives even if they are not shared by senior staff. The old ways, built around an assessment of heritage collections, appear to have gone forever and senior staff members need to recognise this. Economic factors. Up to now the museum has been sheltered from the economic environment. It has been funded by the government, not the marketplace, and that funding has been largely determined by stable internal factors such as artefacts in the heritage collection. It now seems that the museum will become exposed to economic realities. Evidence from the scenario and figure one suggests that this funding is stable, increasing on an annual basis to reflect inflation. However, the progressive reduction of government funding will mean that the museum will be exposed to economic realities. It will have to set realistic emission charges. Resources will also have to be used effectively and new opportunities identified and exploited for increasing income. The Director General included a number of these ideas in his proposals. Opportunities need to be identified and exploited for increasing income. However, it will be difficult to set a charge that will attract significant customers to cover the museum's cost, particularly as customers, visitors, have been used to paying only a nominal entry charge. Social. The social environment is important from at least two different perspectives. The first is that social inclusion is an important part of the government's targets. The government is committed to increasing museum attendance by both lower social classes and by younger people who they feel need to be made more aware of their heritage. The visitor information shown in figure 3 suggests that not only are visitor numbers declining in total but the average age of these visitors is increasing. The museum needs to identify what it needs to do to attract such groups to the museum. So initiatives to this end are required. The Director General has suggested free emission. This could be combined with popular exhibitions, perhaps tied in with television programmes or films, and hands-on opportunities. It appears that the immediate neighbourhood of the museum now houses many of the people the government would like as visitors. And so, from this angle, the location of the museum is an advantage. However, the comment of the Director of Art and Architecture about popularity and historical significance hardly bodes well for the future. The decay of the neighbourhood and increasing crime rate may deter fee-paying customers. The decay of the neighbourhood and the increased crime rate may also defer fee-paying customers. The museum is becoming increasingly isolated in its environment, with many of its traditional middle-class customers moving away from the area and reluctant to visit. The extensive reporting of a recent assault on a visitor is also likely to deter visitors. The museum needs to react to these issues by ensuring that good and safe transport links are maintained to the museum and by improving security both in the museum and in its immediate facility. Visitors need to feel safe and secure. If the museum believes this to be unachievable then it might consider moving to a new site technical or technological factors. Only 10% of the museum's collection is on view. There are online opportunities here. Technology provides opportunities for displaying and viewing archive 
facts online. It provides an opportunity for the museum to become a virtual museum, allowing visitors from all over the world access to images and information about its collections. Indeed, such an approach should also help the museum achieve some of its technological and accessibility targets set by the government. Technology can also be used to increase marketing activity, providing online access to products and allowing these products to be bought through a secure payment facility. Uh, the appropriate use of technology frees the museum from its physical space constraints and also overcomes issues associated with its physical location. Environmental or ecological factors. The museum is located in old buildings requiring regular maintenance and upgrading. It can be argued that all contemporary organisations have to be aware of environmental issues and the impact their activities have on the environment. These are likely to be exacerbated by, exacerbated by the museum being located in an old building which itself requires regular maintenance and upgrading to reflect government requirements. It is also unlikely that such an old building will be energy efficient and so heating costs are likely to be high and continue to increase. Initiatives are required for recycling and energy conservation. The museum needs to adopt appropriate policies on recycling and energy conservation but it may be difficult to achieve these targets in the context of an old building. Consequently, environmental issues may combine with social issues to encourage the consideration of the possible relocation of the museum to a modern building in a more appropriate location. However, the museum building is also of architectural importance and so some acceptable alternative use for the building might also have to be suggested. Legal factors. Legal issues affect the museum in at least two ways. Firstly, there is already evidence that the museum has had to adapt to legal requirements for disability access and to reflect health and safety requirements. Some of these requirements appear to have required changes in the building which have been met with disapproval. It is likely that modifications will be expensive and relatively awkward, leading again to unsightly and un and aesthetically unpleasing modifications to the building. Um, further tightening of legislation might be expected from a government with a mandate for social inclusion. For example, it might specify that all documentation should be available in Braille or in different languages. Legislation concerning fire safety, heating, cooking and food preparation might also exist or be expected. Secondly, the museum is run by a board of trustees there are legal requirements about the behaviour of such trustees. The museum must be aware of these and ensure that their work is probably scoped and monitored. Trustees have and must accept ultimate responsibility for directing the affairs of the museum, ensuring that it is solvent, well run and meeting the needs for which it has been set up. The museum is a charity and it is the responsibility of the trustees to ensure that its operation complies with the charity law of the country. Conclusion If you have time, a brief conclusion would be useful. The Pestel analysis provides management of the National Museum with a clear and worrying view of the reality of today's situation. Indeed, it is a reality check. It highlights the opportunities and threats of the museum's macro environment and can be used as the basis for producing an extensive list of policies and actions required, in particular to reduce the impact of problems revealed. I hope you found some value from going through this case study with me. Thank you for taking your time to work through the National Museum Part A case study. I hope you found it useful, particularly picking up on the approach for answering these sort of big picture scenarios. We looked at Pestel, but the idea of colour coding could be used for other models such as value chain, five colours, five forces analysis, five colours, SWOT analysis, four colours, portfolio analysis, four colours, and so on. Remember to take in my hints on gaining the professional marks on offer. Two marks may not sound much, but is an awful lot when you otherwise score 49%. 
I would like to draw your attention to some really good study aids we have available. RACCAP3 Questions and Answers ebook, which contains 36 question A case study questions, of which National Museum is but one, 47 section B questions, and 8 spreadsheet questions is an excellent offer. We have added these spreadsheet questions and answers because the examiner included a case study question called Call Freeze in the pilot paper. We also have a full study text ebook consisting of 847 pages. Also, students who I teach in class are always asking me for a summary of the theories so that they can cram them just before the exams. We therefore include our P3 revision mnemonics and charts which contain 191 charts, tables and diagrams and 283 mnemonics and 170 screens on paper F5 revision topics. These are all contained within 848 pages. This is a good mix of study and revision electronic kits. Please feel free to join the conversation on our social sites. As you see on the screen, you can find us on all the major sites, Facebook, Google Plus and Twitter. We'd love to hear your feedback and know what other topics you'd like us to present. And of course, you can always email us. Thanks again for your time. We look forward to you joining us on our next video. Good luck in your future studies. Bye.